You may have been told that it's better to use a NAS. Are you sure about that? You have got three examples of Synology NASs rather than an individual hard drive. The problem with using an external hard drive for backing up your data is if this drive fails, you'll lose your data or it may be very difficult or impossible to recover your data. You could use multiple hard drives internally in your computer, but it makes a lot more sense to insert hard drives into a NAS. So do something like this, where we can use RAID to make sure that we still have our data, even when one of the hard drives fails. So that's the theory. But here I've got a NAS, let's actually put this to the test. There are different types of RAID. Which RAID is better? Is RAID 5 better than RAID 0? Is that better than RAID 1? On this NAS, what I've done is I've created RAID 0 using disk 1 and 2, RAID 1 using disks 3 and 4, and then I've got RAID 5 using disks 5 and 8. I can, as an example, connect to the RAID 5 disk and, for instance, open up a file on my Mac and then play that file from my Mac. I could also copy a file to RAID 5. At the same time, go to RAID 1, paste the file, go to RAID 0, paste the file. So that looks great. Everything seems to be working fine at the moment. On my Synology NAS interface, if I go to storage, info center, we can see that all our drives are running normally. These are 16 terabyte hard drives. Everything seems to be working fine. But let's put this to the test. So. Let's start with RAID 5. I'll open up a file and play it. So I'll turn off the audio, but as an example, I have got two files playing from the NAS. So what I'll do is I'll pull one of the hard drives out. Now, obviously that's a bad idea. This is actually spinning in my hand at the moment. Very bad idea to do that. Please don't do that in the real world. This is just to simulate what's going on. So both my videos are still playing. The NAS is complaining now. It's beeping because there's a problem. It's telling us something went wrong. So on the NAS interface, I'm told that there's a critical problem. Under control panel, I'll go to hardware and power and I'll turn off that beep. Under info center, storage, we can see that there's a problem with disk seven. Disk seven has been removed. Under notifications, I'll go to details. We can see that storage pool three has been degraded. There is a problem with the drive. We need to go to storage manage storage to understand the problem. And then we can look at how to repair this. Now the important thing is notice the videos are still playing. I could copy another file to the NAS. So that's fine. The reason this works is because RAID 5 allows one of the drives to fail without any problems. So when choosing your level of RAID, if in doubt with a Synology, just go with SHR or Synology Hybrid RAID. That makes it a lot simpler. It optimizes the volume when combining drives of different sizes as an example. You can start with one drive and then add extra drives. Synology have this fantastic RAID calculator. So if you're ever unsure, you can see what SHR gives you versus RAID 5. So with SHR, we have 16 terabytes of space and then 16 terabytes is used for redundancy because we've got two drives. With RAID 5, that's not possible because we need at least three drives. So if I add an extra drive here, notice we get 32 terabytes of storage with RAID 5, and then one disk is used for backup. With SHR, we get something similar. So in this example, we had four drives, and what that means is we have 48 terabytes of space with one disk as a backup. And that's what we had here, notice 41, 0.9 terabytes, that's the space used. One disk is just used as a backup because we're doing striping here. Things can continue normally. A video can play even though that's degraded. I can copy files, etc. So no problem there. Now, before I show you something similar with mirroring, let's restore this drive. If I click on system health, what we can see is that storage pool three is degraded. There's a problem with this storage pool and we can repair it. But before I do that, if I go and look at my hard drives, I can see that I've got seven drives that are working properly, but there's a problem with drive seven. So on storage pool three, I need to fix this and I can repair that, but we're told that we need an additional drive. So I'll put the drive back. Under overview, we can see that that drive has crashed and we're told that we need to deactivate the drive. We need to put our password in. The drive is now being deactivated. You can now replace it. 
So what I'll do is I'll actually remove this drive again and put it back in. Typically, you're going to put a new drive in, not a drive like I've done here. So I'm doing the kind of things that you shouldn't do, but just to show you what happens when something goes wrong. You can see the light has turned green now, so that's a good sign. I can go back to storage pool three, click repair now, select drive seven, and then click apply to raise the data and add it to the storage pool. Notice while that's been happening, my videos are still playing. So things are still carrying on as normal, even though I'm busy making changes to RAID 5 on my Synology. You can see here how far the repair has got. So 0% at the moment. Now in volume two, this is healthy. This is using RAID 1. Let's try and do something similar on RAID 1. Now we told on the Synology website that RAID 5 implements block level striping with parity data distributed across all member drives, thus providing data redundancy more effectively than RAID 1. RAID 1 writes the identical data simultaneously to both drives. This allows you, for instance, to use two drives. Again, going back to our RAID calculator, what's really nice is I could select RAID 1 here, and let's say I remove all drives but one, SHR allows me to use that single drive, but RAID 1 doesn't because we need two hard drives to do RAID 1. One of the disadvantages of RAID 1 and the other RAID methods is if I have two drives of different sizes, I only get storage of the smallest drive. So as an example, RAID 1 only gives me 14 terabytes here. We are losing two terabytes. The same applies with Synology but if I add three drives here and use RAID 1, I only get 12 terabytes because that's the smallest drive, whereas SHR gives me 26 terabytes of data. So more efficient use of the data. If I change this to RAID 5, I would get 24 terabytes, whereas with Synology, I would get 26 terabytes. So SHR definitely makes it a lot easier and we can expand the data, whereas with RAID 5 and the other systems of RAID, you can't do that. Okay, so let's check if this actually works because at the end of the day, that's all we care about. Is it real world? So I've got RAID 1 and I've got some files there. I'll stop my media player and I'll run the video on RAID 1. So there's the first video. There's the second video playing. So I've got both videos playing. And what I'm gonna do now is these two drives are using mirroring. I'll pull out the second drive. So I'll pull that out. Again, not a good idea, not something you should be doing, but notice the videos are still playing. So I can jump around in my video and that continues playing. Same thing happens here. Video continues to play, but I'm now getting beeps because of the alert. There's a degradation in the performance of the Synology. We told that storage pool two has been degraded. On our alerts, we told that Storage pool three is good, but there's a problem with storage pool two. So this has been degraded because one of the drives has been taken out. Can we still copy files to the Synology RAID 1? And the answer is yes, we can. So with RAID 1, I can still copy files. I can still read files. So those videos are still playing. Things look okay from a user's point of view, but obviously I'm getting this crazy beeping. So what I'll do is go to hardware and power and I'll turn off the beep because we know there's a problem already. And on volume two, we're gonna wanna fix this. Same principle again, I'll put the hard drive in. I have to do something similar with the hard drive. Hard drive four is currently missing. Lights come on now, so that's been added back, but we can see there's a problem. So that drive has crashed. So what I'll have to do is do something similar where I deactivate the drive and then add it back. So deactivate it. put my password in, and then I'll have to remove it and reinsert it. So take it out and then put it back in again. I'm once again doing <laughs> things that you shouldn't do to make a point so that you don't have to do this kind of thing. So back on volume two, we told that the drive is inserted so we can manage the drive. We can repair our storage pool, which is pool two, select the drive and then click apply to add it back to storage pool two, which is doing mirroring. So now that will be rebuilt. It's busy repairing at the moment, but there you go. Again, my videos are still playing off the remaining drive. So that's great. And once again, I could copy files from my Mac onto the mirrored drive 
and that works fine. So from a user point of view, there's perhaps degradation of service. Things will be slower when things go wrong, but it still works. But what about RAID 0? So I've got RAID 0 configured on these two drives. But what happens when something goes wrong? I'll go back to my RAID calculator and I'll select RAID 0. RAID 0 gives me the full 32 terabytes of data. The Synology website explains this really nicely. Here's a quick overview. RAID 0 features striping, a process of dividing data into blocks and spreading the data blocks across several drives to enhance performance. This is the big thing. It does not provide data redundancy. So if we scroll down here, you can see data is copied across both drives. It gives us increased performance and capacity, but no fault tolerance. So that is a major problem. In some cases, you may have a separate backup of this and all you want is speed, so that works. RAID 1, implemented most often with two drives, which are mirrored. If one of the drives fails, everything can be rebuilt. I've demonstrated that already. RAID 5 provides fault tolerance and increased read performance, needs three drives. It can sustain the loss of a single drive, and I've demonstrated that as well. But let's do this test. Will it work when one of those drives break? So I'll stop the video player, run the first video. So this is running off RAID 0. Start second video. So I've got two videos running now off RAID 0. What happens when I pull out one of the drives? Okay, so back on the Synology interface, storage pool 1 is healthy. Everything looks good there, but I'll pull out one of the drives. So drive is busy spinning. I've put it down. Notice video stopped playing. If I try and play it, it doesn't work. Both videos have stopped. If I try and copy files to that directory, it's trying to copy, but it's gonna fail. So I'll go back and try and connect to RAID 0. Notice things are not working. My video play is hanging. QuickTime is saying application not responding. There's a problem. I can't copy the files. So basically, this has died now. I may have lost my data now. Notice it's crashed. Insufficient number of drives in the storage pool. We told that that drive's okay, but I can't get to the drive. Notice my other volumes are busy building at the moment, but we have a problem with storage pool one. Okay, I'll go to hardware and power, and I'll turn off the beeping. That doesn't really help us though, because we've lost our data. Okay, so there I've demonstrated RAID zero, RAID one, and RAID five. Think carefully about the RAID that you're using. If it's a Synology like this, the easiest is just to use SHR. But notice they do give you calculators here to help you decide what to do. So in my example, I've got multiple 16 terabyte drives. I could decide how to set this up. Using RAID 1 here is a waste if I've got all those drives. I probably want to use RAID 5, which will give me 80 terabytes. But SHR makes it easier because I can expand the storage. So I could start with a few small drives and then expand it. If I add smaller drives and bigger drives, notice I get more data with SHR than with RAID 5. RAID 5 only gives me 126 terabytes. SHR gives me 142. If I go for RAID 6 as an example, notice even smaller amount of data. This is what's nice with this calculator. You can very quickly see what you're gonna get with different versions of RAID. If you're a beginner and if in doubt, use SHR. For this drive, I'd once again have to deactivate the drive and then add it back to the system. And I may be lucky enough to get my data. I've now deactivated this drive. Now I'll be able to take it out and replace it. So take it out there and put it back. We're told that it's not initialized, but I can manage this drive now. So under volume one, what I'm gonna have to do now is remove this storage pool and then create a new storage pool. I can't simply add that drive back again. So be careful with RAID 0. You probably want to use SHR rather than RAID 0. Okay, so this was quite a long video, but hopefully it's shown you practically what happens when you just pull drives out of a Synology NAS like this. Hopefully I've shown you that it makes more sense to use NASs rather than individual hard drives. This hard drive fails, and this is the only place where you've got your data, you're going to lose your data. At least here, if you're using the right version of RAID, or SHR, your data can be recovered. Because as an example, if I lose one of these drives in RAID 5, I still have the data striped across the other drives. Please.